Good evening. Welcome to the Booth Artist Guild meeting for April. I am so pleased to see everybody here considering our weather tonight. It's been a little bit dicey at times and, and perhaps not as inviting to be out driving. But I, I really am glad to see each and every one of you here. It's going to be a fascinating evening this evening. Uh, but before we get to that, first of all, I would love to thank, as always, the Booth Western Art Museum and, and especially the staff. To, to do what they do. I know that most of them are here anyway on Thursday evenings, but they really put out a welcome mat for all of us. And they do a magnificent job of supporting us and making sure we have everything we need when we need it. So uh, a big thank you to, to the museum and all its staff. And I wanna thank all the people who've been out of their way tonight to come to this. And to those that are at home on Zoom, welcome. We're glad to see you here. I do have a public service announcement. I don't know if you can notice it from there, but wear your sunscreen. If you notice, I got a little Band-Aid on my face. Um, too much fun in the sun as a teenager, and it's never too late to uh, to take care of those kind of things. So, and I I see a few hands raised out there, but be sure to be be proactive in, in protecting yourselves, particularly if you're out plein air painting. Sometimes we get so absorbed in, in our painting and what we're doing, we tend to forget about some of the other things that we need to be paying attention to. So do wear your sunscreen, wear your sun protection, and, and be safe. We want to see you back next month. I have a couple of announcements tonight I'd like to go over first. And the first one is don't forget about submissions to the downtown gallery. That's open through April 18th. So if you haven't put together some submissions, be sure to do that and get that, uh, send them to uh, Melissa Tanner over at the downtown gallery. Uh, there is on the website, there's a link that will probably have all the information that you need, uh, including the spe specs that you have to abide by on the, the each painting. And so you're allowed to submit up to two paintings. And I tell you, some of the artwork has been absolutely fantastic. Each, each exhibit, it gets better and better. And I would love to see what everybody's coming up with. So don't forget about that. If you haven't submitted yours yet, there's still time to do it. Uh, including myself. Um, the other one is our next meeting next month. We're going to have Christina Havens will be doing, uh, or we believe will be doing a demo on some of her portrait painting. I don't know if you know Christina. I got to watch her paint at the uh, West Fest quick paint we had last year. She did a magnificent job on a, on a small portrait of, of a, uh, uh, a Native American person, and it was absolutely beautiful. She won the contest for the uh, quick paint, but it was just an amazing piece of work that she does. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her work. Another one is that we've had... If you've not heard, we, we are looking for some more talent to be on our leadership group to help help the, the Artist Guild to be even better than what we've become. And we've done a lot of good work. We, we've expanded. We've got new members all the time. And welcome to those of you who are, are new here tonight. Uh, it's it's growing, and we, uh, we're, we've got some great ideas for the future but we need a little assistance. We've had about 10 people respond to that. So uh, if there's something that you've been brewing in your heart, if you've seen the notice and you're thinking about you have something to offer, be sure to reach out to Palmer Rhodes and let her know. Uh, we always need more enthusiastic uh, people to help drive us to, to be the best that we can be. I mean, we are part, a guild of one of the best museums certainly the best western art museum in the united states in my humble opinion and why not have one of the best artist guilds so uh keep that in mind tonight though we have a a, a wonderful uh presentation because as artists there are a few things that we absolutely need in order to do our art. And one of the things we need to do is have a great surface to paint on. And so tonight we have a presentation from Aida uh, Horace, and she is representing Multimedia Art Board. And she's gonna give us a, a well, some demonstrations, some, some uh, information. She has some samples here and well, 
I'm not going to try to tell her what she's going to do. I'm going to let Aida do it. So give a nice, warm welcome to Aida Porras. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for braving the weather tonight. Appreciate you coming out. And for those of you joining us on Zoom this evening, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. Let's get started. Tonight, what I'm going to talk about is what we do at Multimedia Art Board, a little bit about our history, what artists are saying about our materials, and finally, we'll do a deep dive into our many products. As we go through the presentation, you're going to see some artwork by some of our artist friends. They're not just our customers, but we certainly consider them to be our friends. So the first piece of art you've seen here is from our friend, Lori McNee. What do we do? This will be the only thing I read during the presentation. Our mission is to be the leading provider in the production of high quality American made art products. Our company upholds a tradition of fine art through our commitment to providing artists with products that support ease of use in all artistic endeavors. And that last phrase really encapsulates what was at the heart of the very beginnings of our company. The company was started in 1985 by my mother-in-law, Alice Carney. She was a graduate of UCLA in fine arts and following her graduation, she traveled to Europe and Asia to hone her craft. She was a founding member of the Sandstone Gallery in Laguna Beach and she painted watercolor, oil, acrylic, and also did um, collage. And through her career, she started to develop arthritis in her hands. And she had been stretching her own canvas. And, you know, in, in the 1980s, it wasn't easy just to walk into a store and get framed canvas. So she, for a while, gave that job to her friends. And after that, she decided she wanted to do something else. And that's when she and her husband came up with the idea of developing a product that could suit her many artistic interests. And that's partially how Multimedia Art Board was born. The company started out in, in the garage of the, the couple, Tom Carney and his wife, uh, in the garage in Redmond, Washington, and uh, then quickly grew. The company after Alice's retirement was taken over by my brother-in-law, Steve Carney and his wife, and they held the company for a short time. Following that in the early 1990s, my husband, Tom Carney took over the business. And at that time, we just had one product, multimedia art board, white and black, take it or leave it. <laughs> and Tom said, you know, we really need to be bigger than this. And so he started talking to artists around the country pastelists, oil painters, people that were well-known and people that just called on the phone. And he picked their brain and said, well, what would make it easier for you to make art? And so he listened to many artists telling them what they were looking, telling them what they were looking for. And so he came up with plein air artist panels, pastel artist panels, ready to mount. And I'm gonna go over these products in a little more detail in just a few minutes. Uh, on top of that, we started mounting other surfaces, and uh, I'll, I'll discuss that as well. Following Tom's passing last year, I became president and CEO. And I'm not new to the company. I've been with the company for 20 years, as long as my marriage. <laughs> and uh, I was mostly uh, involved in the marketing and branding of the company um, through my tenure with Multimedia Art Board. But now that I'm in charge, I'm starting to study art myself and uh, looking forward to future horizons with the company. What artists are saying? This beautiful piece of work is by our friend, Joanna Arnett, who we lost in February. And uh, she was a wonderful uh, oil painter and friend. This is Rob Gregoretti's work. He's a pastelist located in New York City. And uh, here's what he had to say about Multimedia Artboard. I'm drawn to the texture and stability offered by the pastel panel. It will accept just about any medium. It's a tool of expression and a major part of my studio. Scott Christensen from Idaho. I use Multimedia Artboard products for travel and outdoor painting. They're lightweight, sturdy, and durable. You can carry much more and the weight is lighter. 
Lori Putnam. I prefer a rigid substrate over a stretched one because the finest quality and care goes into everything multimedia makes. I can count on their panels for my studio work. Kevin McPherson. Tom and I brainstormed many times, see that's what I was talking about, to create quality lightweight painting panels to make the planner experience the best possible. I really enjoyed the lightweight but rigid center boards with mountain oil paper. So you can see these artists have been using our materials, some of them for quite a long time. And uh, as I said, they're not only customers, but they're friends. Now I'll talk a little bit about our core product line. These are the three. Multimedia artboard on the left, plein air linen panels in the center, and pastel artist panels. We've color branded our, our uh, products so that just from far away, you can kind of note that if you're a, uh, a plein air painter, you know that blue is your color. Multimedia artboard. This is our flagship product. As I said, started using it in 1985, selling it in 1985. It, how is it different from other products? Well, it's archival, dimensionally stable. It's very white. You can paint on either side. There's a smooth side and a textured side. It's only a 32nd of an inch. And it starts out as cotton rag, and then it's infused with epoxy resin, and that makes it dimensionally stable. So you can load it with water, you can do collage on it, it's going to be very durable, and yet it's lightweight. Now for a demo from our friend, Roger Dale Brown. Hey, artist friends, this is Roger Dale Brown. Uh, I am here to tell you about a product I've been using for a long time now. I've been using it for a couple of years. Uh, it is multimedia board, and you can see right here. Um, and it's a, it's a great versatile product. Um, when I go uh, plein air painting overseas or on long distances, this is what I take. Uh, it's, I can get 50 to 100 in in a suitcase and it's very lightweight, uh, very compact um, and very thin. So you can see how thin it is right there. Uh, very, very lightweight. And when I'm on location, uh, it's really easy for me to, uh, to custom the size that I want to paint on. All I have to do is uh, take a knife and score it. It'll pop uh, the size I want at. Um, you can mount many different types of surfaces on, on this board, anywhere from uh, your favorite linen or PVA uh, painted on top of it or ground. Um, I've even used just house paint, though that's not very archival. Um, it's still okay for just little color swatches and color studies outside that you're going to use to study from. So anyway, um, I get this from multimediaboard.com with Tom Carney down in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's, it's a really great product. He gets it to you really fast. Um, just a good all around uh, tool to have uh, for yourself. So what I'm gonna do is to show you, um, uh, I'm gonna do a little demo for you and just to show you how it takes the paint. Uh, this particular uh, multimedia board has got PVA on it. Uh, PVA is a product that they use as a barrier for for the surface that you're going to paint on. Uh, what it does, it's 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 used to, for linen or, or canvas, so it soaks in, so it doesn't let the uh, oil penetrate uh, the linen and uh, canvas. So archivally, um, you know, oil paints will typically will cause uh, those things to deteriorate. And uh, this helps from the oil getting to that place and, and uh, deteriorating the canvas. So anyway, so I'm gonna get started here. I'm just gonna, I've got one mounted here. We're gonna zoom in. <clears throat> and turn around here if I can. This is not gonna be a full-fledged, um, demo, but I want you to see the strokes and how it takes the paint. <clears throat> um, so this is the surface and what I what I do when I'm out on locations, I have this small clipboard um, and I'll just uh, tape the multimedia board right onto it 
Um, and that just, that really uh, uh, keeps it in place. So when I go outside, I don't carry a lot of material with me. Um, I go as light as I possibly can. And um, just basic colors. Uh, what I use is a split primary and then just Gamsol. I don't use a lot of product. Uh, so start with my darks and we'll just make a little bit of a location of a ground plane right here. And then you can see how easy that went on over the PVA uh, multimedia board. And then we'll just put a few little trees. See how easy that is. It, it's it's not real slick, so it's it doesn't uh, uh, you know it doesn't lift off the canvas off the multimedia board. It's got just enough tooth to where it grabs to it, but it's but it's uh, slick enough to where you know there's a good flow to your brush brush stroke. Little so, tree there. Baby tree over there. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to always start off with my darks and then I'll go to a mid tone uh, through most of the rest of the painting. And I'm just going to add a uh, mix up a green. Extending toward a cooler color for the ground plane. It's going to be in shadow. Makes a lighter color up for the sky. The white and the blue. Give that kind of end of the day look. One of the things in plein air painting that I was always taught as I was coming up was, you know, get the colors, get the shapes in fast, and get your shadow area in fast because the light changes. So if you have your shadow in, you know where the light's going to be. So it's important to get those two elements in quick in case that light changes on you. Okay. So we'll just add a little bit of light to the trees, but you can see how easily that uh, multimedia board's taken that. That's a really warm light to the trees.
also takes the palette knife really well. A lot of times I like to use, especially on these little cedars that we have around here, I like to build the texture up on them. There's a green color now, it's really warm. Right over the top of this red light pattern I have on the trees. Takes it right over the top. I've got some broken color. See just a little bit more. So you can see how this lays over the top. This. This is just a little bit of a ultramarine with white. You know, introduce into the sky and top part of the sky and just a bit of red into that. Nice tone to the sky. And then the lower part of the sky, I'm just going to make it a little bit more yellow and a little lighter. It's really easy to push this paint around on this PVA multimedia board. Lighter color, looking at the foreground. Just introduce colors into these existing um, shapes. Easy surface to work on. Add a few little uh, branches and trees in between these cedars. See how it lays right over the top. It's what I like about a, a board instead of a, a linen. It's really most easy to work on as far as laying thick paint over thick paint. Add another layer of light 
in the ground plane and the trees, and then I'm going to let this go. Like. See how easy it is to lay over. A lot of these thinner areas have already soaked into the to the multimedia board. And now all I gotta do is come back in and you know, tamp this a little bit with the palette knife. Drag some of these curves together better. Other trees. Okay, so that's it. Just a real simple, basic uh, uh, video, but I wanted you to see how that uh, that multimedia board uh, took the paint. Uh, this again, this has the PVA on it. You can buy that from uh, several different makers, um, and uh, just apply it uh, with a foam roller, and then uh, just let it soak in. <clears throat> so anyway, hope that helps you uh, with your plein air adventures. We will talk to you later. There you go. All right, now we're going to move on to our plein air artist panels. We make them in uh, with two different uh, backing. One is the uh, thinnest plein air panels you can buy, which are our Claussen's linen on the multimedia artboard. So the board that he was painting on, we take that board and mount linen on it, and that makes it archival, dimensionally stable. We also mount Claussen's linen on eighth of an inch Sintra, which is a PVC extruded. So that means that the air has been taken out of it, but it's very light and durable. And I hope you'll join us after uh, the presentation down here on the stage so you can actually hold some and, and take a look at it close up. So the sizes that we offered in are five by seven all the way up to 18 by 24. We make these panels in our warehouse and uh, everything is developed uh, or put together by hand essentially. So it starts the, we start out with a multimedia artboard and then we apply adhesive and it's an acid-free adhesive. So therefore it's archival. And then once we've got the boards with adhesive, then we mount that on uh, the linen. So the linen that we use is number 13 double oil prime, number 13 quadruple oil prime, number 15 double oil primed, and number 109 universal, which you can use water-based. So your water-soluble oils or acrylic paints on, on that linen. So now we're gonna take a quick look, uh, fast motion, so you can see us making those panels. That's how it's done. Now I'd like to tell a story about our friend, Dylan Gillespie, who traveled on the Pacific Crest Trail. 
he gave us a call and he said, I'm going on the expedition of a lifetime and I need to take some painting supplies. And I wonder what you could offer me. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Pacific Crest Trail, but it runs along the west coast of the United States. And if maybe you've seen the movie Wild with Reese Witherspoon or you've read the book Wild by Cheryl Strayed, that's the very same trail. So this is what Dylan had to say. The portability and quality of multimedia artboard is simply incomparable. Nothing comes close. Without them, hiking the Pacific Crest Trail as a painting expedition would have been near impossible. Whenever I go plein air painting, whether close to home or all the way to Asia, I always bring my multimedia artboards. So there he is. And uh, there is a whole journal article on our website if you'd like to read more from his travels. Next, multimedia artboards, pastel artist panels. This, uh, this is our multimedia artboard and that is the base of it. And, and then we hand silk screen proprietary grounds and it's our own formulation and it's put directly on the multimedia artboard. That, and the reason it's non-warping and dimensionally stable, because that's the that's the property of multimedia artboard, which is at the very base. We use 320 grit, and it is available in white, black, gray, and sandstone. Now a demonstration from Lisa Stoffer. Hi, I'm Lisa Stoffer. I'm a pastel painter and a plein air painter. And a lot of times when I go out to paint, I like to do an underpainting before I paint the pastel on the surface. And my paper of choice is multimedia artboard pastel paint. I'm going to show you a couple of the reasons why today. This has a watercolor underpainting under the pastel, a plein air piece. This is a plein air watercolor first, and then pastel on top. The, one of the reasons I like multimedia artboard pastel panel is I've done a lot of water on it, doesn't buckle. Don't have to mount it, it's rigid and ready to print. So let's go to the easel and I'll show you a few tips about painting. On this paper, I'm gonna show you three more underpainting possibilities. I've done a light coat of pastel. I've set it in just a little bit with this brush. That just gives me a slightly smoother uh, under painting, you can just go right ahead with the solvent and not do this. That works as well. First, I'm going to do the pastel coat on multimedia artboard pastel panel with water, then show you alcohol as the solvent, and then turpentine as the solvent. So you can see them right side by side. So here we go with the water. I'll start in the lightest color. You can think about painting with the light or with the shape of the objects, the form. This really now becomes a watercolor first. Pastel, pigment, moving with water, is watercolor. All the same, and come down my path. I think about creating aerial perspective and possibly texture in my underpainting. That's what I'm looking to get out of it when I'm painting. So effectively the pastel dissolves and you have a watercolor. I can go in and do various watercolor techniques. Look at it run, look at it drip. And that's a set in watercolor painting. Next, I'm going to use denatured alcohol for the solvent. Works just as well. You get a slightly different look. It comes out a little more dense or solid than either the water or the oil, a little darker, and uh, the brush strokes show a little bit more, stay a little more solid with alcohol. You can see already the slight difference. It's, it just sets into the paper much more swiftly and a little darker. If you want to, you can come back in, darken passages, lift something out as though you can in a watercolor. That certainly works with the water pigment. All the things you can do with watercolor, you can do here. The alcohol, as you see, a little denser, stays in place, shows the brush strokes a little more strongly. 
This paper has texture that is similar to a cold press watercolor paper. So it is a little more textured than the surface of some pastel painters. I don't mind that at all, having painted with watercolor. Alcohol. Our next solvent is odorless turpentine, again with the pastel coating on the paper. You can get the same effect. Look at how much more liquid it is than the other two. You can get a similar effect by using oil paint really thin down to like the strength of a tea, a translucent tea, maybe an herbal tea. And what the turpentine does is it creates an interesting spiderweb pattern. Different, it's a little bit like this here, but different. It pushes the pigment around a little bit on the paper. I may have to show you with a little high, heavier application. Oops, forgot the trees, the background trees. Once each of these dries, you're ready to come in with applications of pastel. Just going to do a couple of trickles for you so you can see that effect. So here we have watercolor over the pastel, water over the pastel, alcohol over the pastel, denser, more solid, matte, and odorless turpentine on top of the pastel. A little brighter. Some interesting spiderweb texture. Thanks for joining me today for these underpainting explorations on the multimedia artboard pastel panel. I hope you'll try these techniques on your own. Enjoy exploring. Happy painting. All right, on to the next one. Ready to mount panels. If you've had paper that you've been storing in the closet for a while, but you know you need to mount and you've just been putting it off, this is a great product to use. Uh, we make the panels uh, in our studio and uh, we apply the acid-free adhesive and all you need to do is just peel it off, lay it down on whatever surface that you might have laying around, <laughs> trim it, and then you just need a brayer to roll it out. And we have a video on our website that you can take a look at. So if, you, if you're interested in buying these, these ready to mount boards, there's instruction available uh, on our website under the video section. It's an eighth of an inch Sintra panel. So this is the substrate that we're using to mount many things at, at multimedia with the acid-free adhesive already applied. And uh, it is exceptionally durable and lightweight. So artists really like that. Then we've taken that same board and we're mounting Arches oil paper, Arches watercolor paper. We've also taken our pastel panels and mounted them on this, on this ready to mount board. And Multimedia Artboard is also available on this ready to mount board. It's a different product name. We call it the Ultralight. So we've taken that baseboard and made multiple uses out of it, but we also sell it directly um, as the ready to mount product. And then finally, I'd like to say thank you to all of my artist friends who were kind enough to share their artwork. I'm sure you enjoyed it as well. Uh, and uh, thank you to all of you for uh, being here tonight. And I am ready for questions. Anybody have any questions here in the audience? Yes. Yes. Because that last artist piece with the panel, it was a different. Um... The watercolor and the turpentine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first one just said watercolor, and she did three demos. Was the first one just watercolor on the pastel board, or was it pastel and water? It was pastel and water. I actually shortened this video, so what you picked up on is how she was referring to it, because there's there was a longer part of the video that actually was just her painting with watercolor. And if you'd like to see that video, it's also hosted on our website. Yeah, so you caught that. <laughs> It is, yes. So what Lisa's process is, is she first does a watercolor underpainting with many of her paintings. So that's what she was showing in the very beginning. 
that she starts with that. And then uh, after it's dried, then she applies some pastel. And then she may mix it with water like she did in the first slot in the first part of that video. And then she, once it dries again, then she'll go back over and apply her pastel. Make sense? Great. Anybody else have a question? Yes. Right. Let me repeat her question because we've got some people at home on Zoom. So her question was, do you have to put PV, PVA sizing on multimedia or, in order to paint on it? You do not. Um, some people have asked me, do you have to put gesso? You do not. Um, Roger happens to like putting PVA to paint on, and he, he mentioned those properties that he likes about it, the, the way he can smoothly add his paint. But I think that's a personal preference, but it's not mandatory. Yes, it is archival already. That's that's a great question. So uh, she asked, how do you recommend mounting the panels for framing? So the board itself is already frame ready. You don't have to put it behind glass. It's archival, as I mentioned. So the only thing you need to worry about is the the when you're framing the depth of the board that you need to put behind it to make it steady, you just need to make sure that, that the top of that is also archival so that it will last. So it's up to you which you'd like to choose, as long as it's archival. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, the, the issue is if you paint on, you know, let's say you've got a finished painting and then you want to try and mount it, then you've got to worry about the edges. So, you know, it's better to start with whatever, you know, like, and you don't have to mount your finished painting if you just use the proper backing, the backing board, which you do not have to glue. And then the first set of questions was about the primary color. Mm -hmm. Yes. So her question was about, can I talk a little bit about the differences in the linen? Number 13 quadruple primed is extremely smooth. So it's, it's primed four times. It's going to, so people like it for uh, the fineness of, let's say doing portraiture, that kind of thing. Um, still life artists also like the number 13. So it's the most primed linen that we offer. That's the quadruple primed. The number 13 is also used for portraiture and for still life or, or, and I've had people that do landscape that say, you know what, I just like a really smooth surface. So again, it's really a personal preference. And then number 15, Claussen's linen is primarily used by landscape artists because it does have a bit of tooth to it. Uh, I love that question, by the way. And then the last one, the Universal Prime, which is number 109, is uh, for water-based paints. So you can use acrylic, you can use your water-based oil, that sort of thing. Great. Any other questions? Yes. I love it. Which ones? The multimedia artboard or the the linen panels. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough about it. Well, thank you. Um, well, we ended up buying the the artboard, and that that's awesome. I mean, it it works beautifully. I wish I could repeat everything she just said for the listeners at home, but she said. She said that Tom talked her into buying multimedia artboard, but she's also used a linen planner panels and loves them. I, I started, I ordered from y'all when I took a little shop and stop Christmas, mm -hmm. and he recommended it. And Tom is extremely helpful. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I do have big shoes to fill, but she said Tom was extremely helpful. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much for your for your input. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else have a question? Uh, yes, back here. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Okay, so the plein air panels, the thinner ones, the ones that are made on the multimedia artboard. So that's everything starts out with the multimedia artboard when they're thin. So whether it's the planner panels or the pastel panels, we're using the same, the same board. Okay. But the planner panels come five to a pack. They're a 32nd of an inch. And Klaus's linen is mounted on, on the multimedia artboard. Alternatively, I mentioned the Sintra that is the PVC extruded. So that's the air taken out, and that's the one that's the eighth of an inch, and those come two to a pack. And we also mount Claussen's linen on that, all of the linen I just mentioned. All right, somebody over here. Yeah, let me get her because uh, you asked one question. Yes. When you get into the larger size of the art board, mm -hmm. can it be rolled for shipping, or is it too rigid for that? You cannot roll any of our materials. They are too rigid. Yes, go ahead. We are not in Atlanta. We are located in the city of Cumming, which is a little bit north, right? So here it took me tonight about an hour 45. But if any of you want to come visit, come on down. Just give me a call. We'll make an appointment. Be happy to show you around. Any other questions? Anybody at home? I do not have, well, I have like, a couple of pieces. I've, I do have, I do have um, some materials, but typically we're making them to order. So uh, I just, and, you know, if you want to come down and pick up sometime, you're going somewhere special, be happy to have you come down and, you know, if you would like to pick them up, but we ship all the time, if that's not convenient. Somebody over here who, is, who raised their hand? Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. We just, uh, we have somewhat irregular hours, so just good to call ahead and let me know you're coming and what you're looking for. Yes, back here. One question. What is the difference with your product and Gator? Ah, uh, well, Gator board, um, you know, is not a through and through like uh, the PVC. So if you if you know, there's no air in the uh, Sintra, for example. So it's a very firm board. And then multimedia artboard is just much thinner. And again, it's just a flat board. You saw what, when Roger Dale Brown held it up, I mean, it's a 32nd of an inch. So it's, it's you really can't compare it. You know, it's not the same thing. So the question was, how do you compare it to gator board? And uh, don't, <laughs> it's not the same. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you again for the invitation. And if you'd like to visit our website, it's a long one. I wish it was shorter, but it's www.multimediaartboard.com. And uh, it's right here on the screen. So uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find us online. Thank you so much.